Well, I had just moved to New York City, I mean, within days, and just started at Columbia in grad school. And I was actually in a remedial economics class, or math class, I should say. I had to go leave the room to go make some, like, copies of something. And I walked out, and this guy who I'd just met a couple days before said, hey, it's so weird, like a little plane just hit the World Trade Center. I immediately knew that nothing accidentally hits the World Trade Center. Then the smell, the smell of that, the burning buildings and that very sort of toxic chemically smell that was just hanging over New York for weeks, if not months, and it completely changed my life. I mean, top to bottom. So your decision to enter uh, national security is directly tied to what you went through on 9-11. Absolutely. I always had an interest in international affairs, but I would never saw myself in the intelligence community or in something like hard national security until that day. And that feeling that I think a lot of us felt of, of being attacked and not seeing it coming and something that was, wasn't just an attack, it was a spectacular attack, right? It was designed for maximum impact. It took planning and organization and it just felt like I wanted to be a part of preventing that from, from ever happening again. You know, I spent the next 15 years in the executive branch in different national security roles. Do you find the experience of 9-11 and then your subsequent career in the CIA, does it help inform you as a legislator? And in what specific ways does it help inform you as a, a lawmaker? You know, it was funny. When I first got here, people told me, well, when you vote on bills, like, you won't have time to read them. And I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And, you know, as a CIA analyst, we're taught to thoroughly and objectively read information and analyze that and to make, again, the, ba the best assessment we can based on the available information. And I try to do that with legislation. Every time someone comes to see me in my office and they want me to vote this way or they want me to do this or they want, I say, I'm happy to hear you out, but I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to thoroughly read everything you give me and then I will come back to you with an answer. Like you're not going to get it right here at the table. And that comes directly from being a CIA analyst. So 20 years later, what would you say is the, the number one threat right now on your mind that uh, either Congress isn't paying attention to or should be paying more attention to? Yeah. I think right now the divisiveness among Americans is the number one threat to the United States. Because number one, it impacts every single American, right? It, it's, it is in our neighborhoods and in our towns in our schools. And number two, it creates a really, really difficult situation when it comes to governing because we have these opposite poles that are constantly pulling that sort of pragmatic middle apart. That month after 9-11 was like a vision of how our society could be if we treated people decently. And it was like you felt a kinship with other people because we had been attacked. We felt connected to each other as Americans. We were on the same team. And I've thought about that feeling in, in recent years when it's felt like there's so much pulling us apart as Americans and I would never want to be attacked. I just, that idea that we are on the same team I'm so glad I got to experience that in the month after 9-11 because it's, it's what I know we have the capacity for, even when we don't show it.